Hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. We welcome you with praise, oh Jesus. We welcome you. We welcome you. We open up the doors of our hearts and say, King of glory, come in. King of glory, come in. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you. We thank you for the price that you paid. We thank you. We thank you for the victory. The victory that is yours. You have, because of the blood that was shed, you, you, you gave your life so that we could have victory. And we praise you for that, Jesus. We thank you. We love you, Jesus. You are our king. And we give you glory. We're gonna, we're gonna take communion. So if you guys don't have one of these, just lift your hand. I think the uh, ushers are here. Uh, we have the bread, we have the grape juice. But just as we stay in the presence of God, I want to read something for you. Uh, this is from Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 19. And as I was thinking about, as I was thinking about communion today, I was thinking that about what Jesus did and what it means for us. It means redemption. It means salvation. It means healing. It means deliverance. It means wholeness. And I just think about that word, wholeness. We are whole because of Jesus. He's done everything for us. Let me read in Luke chapter 4. It says, So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This is what Jesus came to do for us. To bind up the brokenhearted. To give sight to the blind. This was his ministry, but it's also his continuing ministry in our hearts and in our lives. Because of what he did on the cross, we have access to all of these things. Salvation, deliverance, healing, wholeness in our lives. There's not one broken heart that he cannot mend up, bind up, fix again. He wants to bring wholeness into your life. He wants to bring wholeness into your life. Maybe there's pieces of your life that are broken. Maybe there's pieces of your life that feel incomplete. Invite him in. Say, Jesus, here I am. Invite him in and he will bring wholeness into you. All right. We do this in remembrance of Jesus. Remembrance for the healing, the salvation, the deliverance, the price that he paid for our redemption. So let's just take this bread and lift it up before Jesus. Say, Jesus, today we remember. We remember your ministry. We remember your life. We remember your crucifixion, your death, your burial, your resurrection. We remember. And it's in remembering that we say once again, we believe, we believe in you. We believe in the power of the cross. We believe in the redemption that is ours through Jesus Christ. We believe that we have wholeness through you. We remember. And as we take this bread, we remember you, but we say yes again to all of the good things that are in Christ Jesus. We say yes and amen. 
we say yes and amen. Take the bread in faith. Take it in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we also remember your blood that was shed on the cross. The blood that was shed, the life that was given so that we could have life. You were broken so that we could be made whole. Jesus, you were broken so that we could be made whole and we thank you for that. We remember we say yes and we partake of all of the good things that you have provided for us on the cross. We say yes to those things. We say yes and we embrace it. We receive it and we take from what you have provided for us. We take it in faith. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and drink the grape juice. Presence of God. Amen. Let's just lift up our voices and say thank you to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you for our redemption. Thank you for relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift him high with your voices, with your words. Just say thank you to him. It's all about him. Just lift up your voices and say thank you to him. Jesus, it's about you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, King of glory, God Almighty. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. we lift your name high. We praise you. We give you our lives and we remember in faith. We thank you for the new life that we have in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and take your seats. Amen. We've been in the middle of a series. We're in the middle of a series about evangelism, looking outside of ourselves, seeing the people around us who need the presence of God, the salvation of God, the deliverance of Jesus, all of the things that we receive so freely. God says, freely you have received, freely give, right? Amen. Amen. Freely give. That's what our mandate is. That's what our calling is. We have received, and it's time to give. I want to I look at things from a little bit different perspective today and how we can be that influence. We can be that shining light to those who are around us. And that, that the, the idea that we're talking about today is, is loving our city. Loving our city. You know, there are several cities that were talked about in the Bible. I mean, lots of different ones, obviously. Some of the ones that come to mind when we talk about the topic of loving your city, just off the top of my head, I think about the city of Nineveh. Nineveh, in the story of Jonah, Nineveh was a city, one of the largest cities in the world at that time. It was, a, it was not a Jewish city. It was a city basically of the of the jews enemies they were assyrians they were it was the the city of nineveh and they were not it wasn't a city that was following god or anything like that but god had compassion on that city it says in the in the in the last chapter of of jonah it says that there were 120,000 people in that city and this is the way that god described them that they cannot discern between the right and the left they couldn't they didn't know what was right and what was wrong they didn't know which way was the right way 
And God had compassion on them, and he sent Jonah to preach the gospel. And we, knew what, we know what happened. They all turned to God. Even in, even in the story of, of Sodom and Gomorrah, even before God destroyed the cities of, of Sodom and Gomorrah, he met with Abraham. And they had this big, long conversation, and, and God told Abraham, God told Abraham, this is what I'm going to do to these cities. And, and he, God said, you know, I'm going to destroy these cities. But Abraham said, wait, 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 what if there's 50 people? And God said, okay, if there's 50 people in that city, I won't destroy it. And then Abraham said, well, what about 45? And then God said, no, I won't destroy it for 45. And then they keep going down, 35, 40, or, or uh, uh, 40, 35, 30, all the way till we get to 10 people. And God said, no, I won't destroy it for the sake of 10 people. And we know what ended up happening. Lot and his family, they were rescued out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But the point is that God cares about the city. He didn't want to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But because of, of, of their wickedness, but, but there was a remnant in that city, a, play, a, a people in that city. And God said, if there were 10 people who would stand, who would, who would stay righteous, who would follow me, then I wouldn't, wouldn't destroy that city. We also see other cities, <clears throat> also see, see other cities in the New Testament. You know, most of, the, uh, most of the books in the Old Testament, they were written to a church in a city. Romans was, was written to the church in the city of Rome. And the same with uh, Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, the, city, the, the church in the city of Corinth. Uh, same with Ephesians to the church in the city of Ephesus. And the same thing, Galatians, Philippians, Colossians. And even in the book of Revelation, they, they were the, the churches in the different cities. The churches in the different cities. But God cares about cities. God cares about lands. And I believe that God wants us to have the same heart and the same desire, the same perspective about cities and lands that he does as well. You know, when, when you're flying in an airplane, especially at night, it's really, really interesting when you're way high up in the sky and you can see the lights of the cities. It's all dark, but then you can see that this big cluster of lights. And it's representative of many different people who live in that area. You know, all those lights, you know, they'd be street lights and lights from cars and lights from different things. But it's a cluster of people in those places. God cares about the cities. God cares about the people in those lands. And God wants us to make a difference in our city as well. He doesn't want us just to live in a place without having an influence in a place. He expects us. He, he put that wholeness. He put those talents. He put those spiritual gifts in us for a reason. Not just to make our own lives better, but to be a blessing to others. We've received, we give. We're blessed so that we can bless others. How can we make a difference in our cities? The number one, one of the number one things that we can do is to pray for our cities. Listen to these verses. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30. It says, So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land. God is looking for people who will stand in the gap for Phnom Penh. God is looking for people standing in the gap. There is a gap between the world and God, between the things of the, between people who have never experienced or had an opportunity, they've never been exposed to God's ways and God's blessings. God says, who is there who will stand in the gap? Who is there who will, who will pray, who will bring those two together, who will bring the people of Phnom Penh and bring God to the people of Phnom Penh and bring the people of Phnom Penh to God? Who is there who will stand in that gap? And God's looking. God wants to know who will pray, 
Who will stand in the gap? Who will intercede? Who will say, I'm going to stand before God and pray for my city and be that one who will stand in the gap? Because God says he is looking for someone to stand in the gap before him on behalf of Phnom Penh. 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14, similar verse. God says, if my people who are called by my name, who are God's people here? Who are, who, are, who, who are the people who are God's people? Who are called by God's name? Yes, that's us. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then God says, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. God cares about the land. God cares about cities. God cares. Why about cities? Because they represent people. They represent a group of people. They represent a place of influence. And God says, I care for them. I want to see righteousness in that land. I want to see righteousness in Phnom Penh. I want to see wholeness and healing in Phnom Penh. God says, I'm looking for someone who's going to pray. Who's going to pray for Phnom Penh? The other, some of the other things that we can do to make a difference. Speak words of hope and life. Not just in our prayers, but in our conversations. You know, it's easy to complain. Anybody can complain. We can say, oh, you know, this is bad. This is wrong. This is terrible. This is difficult. This is that. But God says, you know, speak words of hope. Speak words of life. Oh, this is difficult. Yeah, it might be difficult, but God is a God who can make a difference. God is a God of miracles. We serve a God of miracles. Amen? Speak words of hope in conversation. Speak words of life as you pray. As you pray and as you, as you, as you say, you know, God, move upon this land. Move upon this city. Move upon this country. Heal this land. Bring this people to you, to, to hope. We can, we can make a difference by serving. You know, even, even in our communities, maybe in your, your village or in your, the place around where you live, what are different ways that you can serve, that you can be a blessing in your community? Maybe you live in, you know, your little neighborhood or your community or your, or your little village there. What can you do to be a blessing to your neighbors? You know, maybe it's... Uh, Cleaning up the garbage, the, the trash that you see down the street. Maybe it's even planting flowers in front of your house or in front of your neighbor's houses. There's lots of different things that we can do to be a blessing, not just to people, but to the community and as a whole as well. God, I believe that God today wants to give people creative ideas for how they can be a blessing in their community and they can shine that light that God has put within us and be a blessing and bring people to the Lord through serving, through helping, and through giving. One of the things that I enjoy doing is doing prayer walks. Walking through a place. There's something special about walking through a certain neighborhood or certain area. When you drive by, you just see things real quickly. But when you walk through a place, when you walk through a community, when you walk down the street, you observe things at a slower pace that you, than, you would normally, than you normally would. And you see things. You get, you, you, you get more familiar with a certain place and a certain people and the people, your neighbors who are around you. Just take time to walk and pray and ask God, God, I pray your blessing upon this neighborhood. I pray your blessing on these businesses. I pray, God, that your light would shine. And as you do those prayer walks, you start to get more of a feeling for your community, and you start to be that shining light. You know, in Phnom Penh, <clears throat> there are, according to the census of 2013, there's about 1.7 million people in Phnom Penh. 1.7 million. 1.7 million. How many are Christians? Well, there's a good, a good 
share of them are Christians, you know, in the different churches around Phnom Penh. But there's so many more who, have, who haven't, heard from, haven't heard about Jesus. They haven't been exposed to the truth of the gospel, the, the grace of Jesus that we have in our lives. They don't know that yet. God has put us in the different communities where he put us, the different places where we live. God has chosen those places for us for a reason. God wants us to shine our lights. Like it says in Matthew chapter 5, you are the light of the world, a city set on a hill. God wants us to shine everywhere that we are. Amen? Not just here in church. It's great that we come to church, spend time in the presence of God, get re-energized and encouraged, but God sent us, God put us in our communities for a reason. So let that light that God has put within us shine. Let me give you some more statistics from Phnom Penh, just so you can get an idea of the people that God cares about, the land that God cares about here in Phnom Penh. There are 352,548 households, almost 350,000 households in the city of Phnom Penh. That's not, that's not people, that's households. That would be families, people living together in a family, 350 thousand families. Uh, according to the statistics from 2016, there are 375 schools in Phnom Penh. Almost every neighborhood would have a school. Go and prayer walk around that school. God, I pray your blessing on the next generation. God, I pray your blessing. Pray that these, this next generation would know the love of God, would know the grace of God, the salvation of God. Prayer walk around, your, around, your, around the schools in your neighborhood. Uh, there are almost three, uh, sorry, 230,000 students in those schools. The average household size is almost five people, 4.8 people. God has a love for Phnom Penh. Do you have a love for Phnom Penh? Do you have a love for Phnom Penh? If you would answer, well, oh, maybe I don't have so much of a love for Phnom Penh, and there's this and there's that. Okay, well, I encourage you. Pray for your city. Pray for your community. Pray for the people. When you pray, you'll start to get God's heart for this city. You'll start to get God's heart for a community. Don't just complain, but shine your light. Make a difference. Be that light that God has created all of us to be. Amen? Love your city. Love your city. Pray for your city. Stand in the gap. And stand before God, and we'll see this city experience the love of God. Amen? Let's all stand together. Let's pray. Let's stand up. And let's pray for Phnom Penh. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we lift up the city of Phnom Penh to you, God. God, those 1.7 million people in this city, we lift them up to you. God, and we say... Spirit of God, come upon this city. Spirit of God, come upon this city. God, those 350,000 households, God, may they experience you. May they experience the grace of God. God, I pray that you would put one person in each of those households who can share your love, who can speak your truth, who can, who can live by, by example, live that love for each of those households, God. Lord, I pray for the churches in Phnom Penh. God, and I pray for a strength, Lord, for each and every one of them, oh God. I pray, I lift up the pastors, Lord God, and the staff of those churches to you, God. And I pray for a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit upon them. Lord, we release your blessing upon them, oh God, that they can speak your word, that they can have new influence, that they can shine your light to this city. Lord, we speak blessings over this city. God, I pray that you would put a hedge of protection around this city, oh God. Lord, we pray for healing, oh God. We pray for wholeness. Lord God, we pray for salvations, God. We pray for miracles in this city. God, we want to see your kingdom come. We want you to see your will be done in Phnom Penh, oh God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all of the different communities. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for all of the villages and the different 
uh, communities in, in, this, in this city, oh God. Lord, I pray for the schools, the 375 schools, oh God. Lord, and the students that are represented in those schools, oh God. Lord, and I pray, oh God, that you would pour out your blessings upon this next generation, oh God. Lord, the young people, God, we pray that they would not get ensnared by the things of this world, God, but they would live for purpose and destiny. God, they would live to be a blessing, oh God. Lord, I pray that the schools would experience the love of God. Lord, I pray that the schools would experience your grace and your mercy and truth, oh God. Lord, I pray for a revival in our city, oh God. Lord, I pray that you would raise up people who would stand in the gap. Lord, use us. God, we say, may we make ourselves available and say, use us, God, to stand in the gap for Phnom Penh, oh God, that you would heal this land. God, we thank you for Phnom Penh. Lord, we lift up the leaders to you, God, and we pray wisdom and blessing and, and your grace upon each one of them, oh God. Lord God, give them wisdom, Father, for the job that they have to do. Lord, we ask, Father, that you would pour out your grace upon them, the strength to do their daily jobs. Thank you so much for this city. We pray in faith. We pray with the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you guys this week, spend time praying. Spend time praying for Phnom Penh. And be a blessing. Shine your light wherever you go. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great week. And we'll see you all next week. Don't forget small groups. And if you guys have uh, tithes and offerings, we have these boxes available every week. And we'll see you guys next week. God bless you guys. Thanks. Thanks.